Good evening, everybody. It's Amber. I'm back here to share some more tips with you about weight loss and the things that I've experienced and what has helped me and what's worked for me. So today, I wanted to talk about exercise and how do you get started. Now, some of you may have been trying for a while and you're no stranger to exercise. And some and others that you may decide that you know you're in a rut and how do you get started again if you fell off the bandwagon you know which is it's easy to do because we're human and sometimes you fall off the bandwagon but I just want to share a few tips about what helped me get back into exercise because I used to exercise a lot and when I tried to lose weight before then I just sort of fell off and this time it was a whole different experience and I just it just really worked for me this time. I, something about exercise, the well, the the people that I chose to watch on YouTube and stuff like that, it really worked for me. So, my first tip is find something that you like to do and stick with it. That is the key to success. Because if you're doing exercise and you hate it. And it's miserable and you're dreading it. Like when that alarm goes off in the morning or after work. You know, you're not going to stick to it. Because that's the thing. You have to find something that you like. You have to do it at a time that's convenient for you. That works for your schedule. So if you know you're tired after work, don't wait till after work to do your exercise. If you know you're not a morning person... I mean, just be honest with yourself and just do it in the afternoon or do it after work, whatever works for you. And But for me, I found that the mornings are best because there's no interruptions. You know, it's when, you know, your day is starting. It's a good day to start, good way to start off your day. And it gives you energy and everything like that. So it's, it's a great way to start your day. Um, uh, so for me... I just break it down into sections so it doesn't get boring as well. So I'm not going to sit there and do yoga for an hour or do kickboxing for an hour. So I break it down into like 10 little 10 minute intervals or 20 minute intervals or 15 minute intervals. I do three or four different things. I don't do the same thing for an hour because that would just be boring. Like seriously. (laughs) Um, Another tip I would say is change your workout periodically to challenge yourself. And see the results consistently. So, you want to confuse your muscles. They call it muscle confusion. So, you don't want to do the same exercise the same way for like years and years. You want to like every every few months or every few weeks change up what you're doing if you want to see results. Because what worked for you at, let's say, a couple of months ago. It won't work for you anymore because your body is used to it. It adapts just like anything else. Anything else you do, your body adapts. So if you do something different, it forces your body to catch up with it, that new movement. And you actually, you know, get stronger because of it. Now, you're not going to get much stronger by doing the same thing all the time, the same way, the same amount of time. That's why... I never do the the same exercise twice, like the same video twice, or like I never do it the same way. I always try to find a different way to do the same thing so it doesn't get boring and my body is constantly guessing. That's the key to to like seeing the inches keep coming off, seeing that butter <laughs> dissolve and disintegrate, you know what I mean, that fat. <laughs> so... That's one of the things I would say. Next, you have to, you can't just do cardio or just strength training. Strength training is great to rev your metabolism and, you know, to to strengthen your muscles and just, just overall for your body, it's good. But you can't, you got to have balance. You can't just have one and not the other. So, so as to not overwork yourself. For two days a week, at least two days out of the week, you need to do 
strength training some for at least 15 to 30 minutes do some type of strength training and that can be consecutive but if it's consecutive you need to take all rest days from strength training for at least two days after that to give your body a chance to heal. Because if you keep constantly exercising those muscles and tearing your body down in that way, it doesn't get a chance to recover. They, how can your muscles get stronger? So you need that time off for your, your muscles to recover from what you've done and to grow stronger. So a lot happens when you rest. <laughs> it's really essential. And... Also, cardio is something that you should definitely make your friend. <laughs> and in different ways. It doesn't have to be the same thing all the time. Like, I've tried lots of different things. So that leads me to my next tip. Uh, the length of time is not as important as your the content of what you're doing. So, for instance, uh, sometimes I will like, I'll do high-intensity interval training. Which is when you do you do like walking or something, right? And then you do that for 30 seconds. And then maybe the next 30 seconds you'll do push-ups or you'll do crunches or you'll do bicep curls or something of that nature. And that is so if you do an, an intense exercise for 30 seconds, they, I guess... They say that it's like really, it's good for you because you're working your muscles and you're working your heart rate. So, you know, you're, you're just really, it's just really good for you to like change it up like that. Because you, you're you conditioning your body, you're conditioning your heart to work at a more efficient rate. Because you're going from high to low. And then also they have something that out now that's actually called low impact interval training, which is to say it's not a lot of jumping involved and leaping and things like high intensity interval training. And you're mostly staying <laughs> solid, you know, your feet are staying on the ground. So you're planted solidly on the ground. <laughs> Those of you who have knee issues. So that's good. That's a good alternative. Look into it. It's L I T lit training. That's how you can find it. Some of the videos on that, and uh, I like that as well because it was interval training, but it didn't. It didn't feel like I was huffing and puffing. So it's a good alternative if you're not re quite ready for hit for high intensity interval training. But I like both of them equally. You know, if you that maybe you want to fit a a lit workout in. On the days when you don't do HIIT because they, they tell you you should not do high intensity interval training every day. That's like something that you don't do all the time. You you fit it into your days to mix it up and to rev your metabolism and to work on your endurance and conditioning, you know, aerobically. But it's very good for you, though. And uh, you don't have to do it for a long time. That's what I like about it. Like with the, the interval training. You like four minute workouts. Like they're not long at all. Like even if you wanted to do five of those and then just do that for twenty minutes, that's better than nothing. And it's not about you know how long you spend. It's about how hard you work in the time that you're training, the time you're exercising. How hard are you working? How much effort are you putting out? Are you expending? So that's the thing I've learned. And uh, cause sometimes you go do an hour workout and not even get as much done like you don't feel like you you've worked as hard as if you when you've done a short workout you know four or five minutes you do a couple of those little short workouts and it's it's like amazing how much they can actually get they can fit into those little segments that they give you like if you ever I don't know if you watch Lucy Wyndham read or not but she has a lot of great videos four minute long videos and in a matter of like four minutes, honey, you could do, she does lunges, crunches, she might do squats, a lot of combo moves, a lot of dynamic movement. So it's a lot of, it's very energizing, it's very 
It's low impact. She always has an option for you to do something else that if you can't do what she's doing, maybe you just march on the spot, as she would say, and or you just walk back and forth. Whatever works for you. You have to make that's nothing. You have to be cognizant. You have to be aware of what works for you, and don't just look at what the instructor is doing and think that you have to do that and imitate them to the to the nth degree. Do what works for you, and that's the most important thing. And that'll t that'll take you a long way. Uh, so that leads me to my next tip. Start out with five to fifteen minutes, and work your way up to an hour. So if you feel like, oh my goodness, you know, uh, uh, I haven't worked out in years, and I just don't know if I can last that long, you know, an hour, an hour, like, okay, so. Just do five minutes. It's better than nothing. Like, they have so many videos on YouTube. It's ridiculous the amount of videos that they have on here that 